Last time when we talked about the production possibilities frontier, we assumed that there were only four distinct points that we could produce at. Either where everybody was spending time mowing lawns, everybody was spending time washing cars, or people were split between the two options in some way. We had points A, B, C, and D. Now I want to talk about what we can do to construct the overall production possibilities frontier and understand what that looks like, assuming that we can have any combination of lawn mowing and car washing from these three guys. So in order to be able to do this, we need to think about a concept called opportunity cost. In economics, we say that the cost of something is what you have to give up to get it. Seemingly straightforward concept, let's see how it applies to this example here. If we say per hour that Larry can mow one lawn or he can wash one car, if he chooses to wash one car, what he's giving up is mowing one lawn. So his opportunity cost of washing a car is just giving up mowing one lawn. Let's move on to Mo. In order for Mo to wash one car, he only has to give up mowing half of a lawn. So his opportunity cost of washing a car is just half of a lawn. Because he's better at washing cars, since he can do two of those per hour, than he is at mowing lawns, since he can only do one of those per hour. Curly's opportunity cost of washing a car is two lawns, because in one hour he would have to give up mowing two lawns in order to wash one car. Now let's use this information to construct the production possibilities frontier. If you remember from last time, we had two points that were easy to plot on our graph. One of those was where Larry, Moe, and Curly spent all of their time only mowing lawns and zero time washing cars. We said in that case we could get to 40 lawns mowed and zero cars washed because we're assuming that we have 10 hours a day at our disposal. The other endpoint is the point where Larry, Moe, and Curly are only washing cars. Again, they can wash 40 cars if they choose to not mow any lawns. Let's think about how we can more efficiently use resources than just arbitrarily assigning people to lawn mowing and car washing. What we notice here is that Mo has the lowest opportunity cost of car washing. So it would make sense for him to be the first one to switch over to washing cars, since he could do so at the lowest opportunity cost. Let's see what happens when we choose to move Mo from lawn mowing to car washing. If we switch Mo over to car washing, we have the following outcome. We still have Larry only mowing lawns and Curly only mowing lawns. But now, rather than mowing 10 lawns, we have Mo washing 20 cars. So let's plot that on our production possibilities frontier as follows. Now we have a total of 30 lawns being mowed. Could be about here. And we have a total of 20 cars being washed, which is about here. So we get to this point right here. We can say, well, what do we want to do next? Well, now it makes sense to have the person with the next lowest opportunity cost of car washing switch to washing cars. If we look up here, we can say that next least cost person is, in fact, Larry. Now we have both Larry and Moe switched over to washing cars, and Curly is the only guy left still mowing lawns. We can see with this setup that now we have 20 lawns being mowed, and 30 cars being washed. So we get a point approximately here. Clearly the only guy left to switch over is Curly. And if we switch Curly over to washing cars as well, we just end up at this end point here with 40 cars being washed and zero lawns being mowed.
So this is what our overall production possibilities frontier looks like. And you'll notice that there's a break point in the slope of the curve each time we switch a new person over from one activity to another. Again, let's think of the meaning of the slope of our production possibilities frontier. Now you'll see even more explicitly that the slope of the production possibilities frontier, or at least the absolute value of the slope, relates back to the opportunity cost of one activity in terms of the other. In this case, it represents the opportunity cost of the thing on the x-axis, cars, in terms of how many of the thing on the y-axis, namely lawns mode, we have to give up. So we said in the first part that we were switching Mo over from mowing lawns to washing cars. Well, we said that his opportunity cost of one car wash was half of a lawn mode, so it's not surprising here that the slope of this portion of the production possibilities frontier is just negative 10 divided by 20, or negative 1 half. Then we moved over the next most efficient guy, Larry, since his opportunity cost of one car wash was one lawn mode, and that corresponds to the middle part of our production possibilities frontier, which is here. Now our slope is, again, negative 10 divided by 10, or negative 1. The third segment represents the part where we have Curly also switching over to washing cars, in which case his opportunity cost is two lawns. Correspondingly, the slope of this portion of the production possibilities frontier is negative two because we have negative 20 divided by 10. Again, in general, we see this sort of shape for our production possibilities frontier because if we're thinking about how to get the most out of our resources, we want to switch over the resources with the least opportunity cost first, then the next least cost, and so on and so forth.